There are also new reports that the terror group is fighting back with suicide car bombs and chemical weapons. The Red Cross says doctors have treated at least 12 people for chemical weapons exposure this week, many of them children. Joining me now, Michael Waltz, the former Green Beret commander and counterterrorism advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney, also a Fox News contributor. Good to see you this morning. Hey, good morning, Chan. Okay, so one London-based research and intel watch group says that there are 52 times they count at least that ISIS has used chemical weapons, 19 of those in or around Mosul. It's potentially a war crime. Does that matter to ISIS? Well, let's take a step back for a moment, Shannon. I think for those that wonder and question why the United States needs to be involved in the Middle East, why you know these wars are worth America, American blood and treasure, you know, uh, former CIA director John Brennan testified last year that he believes ISIS is capable of producing on its own chemical weapons. Now, I think we all know that in addition to using them on the battlefield, they would love to use them in spectacular attacks in Europe and in the United States. We have to destroy this group, we have to do it quickly, and then we have to get to a longer term strategy of how we undermine this ideology so that some group like it doesn't pop up again. And speaking specifically of Mosul, we know for months there's been an ongoing battle there. Uh, the eastern part was, we're told, liberated essentially in January, but this right. uh, alleged chemical attack happened there. Um, how much of this is psychological for the people there? Uh, you know, essentially the troops on the ground, they've got to wear special gear. Uh, right. it, it presents a new challenge for them. Well, we believe the reporting indicates that rockets uh, were launched from the western side of the city into the eastern side of the city that's been liberated, but you make a great point. It's incredibly difficult for these rockets to be accurate or for ISIS or groups like them to make them accurate and to employ chemical weapons in a militarily effective way. But what they do is they create a huge psychological effect, they instill fear, and they're massively disruptive uh, to an attacking force because they have to stop and use this bulky uh, difficult protective gear. I don't think the Iraqi army really frankly has the ability to fully protect itself, but we have American advisors that are very close to the front lines right now that are right up there with the Iraqi forces facing this type of threat. And it's certainly something that they're going to have to take, in, take into account as they move forward. And one of the first things the president did uh, upon being inaugurated was launch this 30-day clock for his top military and uh, strategic advisors to get together a plan for getting rid of ISIS. That has, we understand, been submitted. So where do we go from here? How is the fight against ISIS going to be different under a Trump administration than it was under Obama? Well, that's going to be a much bigger issue. And that strategy needs to, while it's coming from the Pentagon, has to take into account economic considerations, intelligence considerations, and most importantly, diplomatic considerations. And that's why our State Department is so important in that Turkey has a stake in this, Russia has a stake in it, and yet right now we're talking about what's going on in Iraq, but right over the border we also have the offensive going on against the Islamic capital of Raqqa, where you have Turkey fighting U.S.-backed uh, Kurdish rebels, you have Iran aligned with Russia. I mean, it is, it is a diplomatic kind of Gordian knot that we need to figure out how we want this to look at the end and then build the mil military strategy to achieve that political end. Yeah, and a lot of folks saying that the new revised travel ban, which takes Iraq off the list, that's in part connected to all of the things you just mentioned, right. uh, because we do see them as a very important partner in that region. All right, uh, Michael Waltz, good to see you this morning. Thank you.